Hello everyone, it's good to be back again. Today is Sunday, May 9th, 2021, and I'm Sister Cynthia Randolph. We're going to focus in today on Divine Mercy Gives Us Hope and the big idea, Isaiah Offering Hope for the Future. But before we begin, we'll say a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, God, for loving us and for keeping us, God, for forgiving us for sins we commit by thought, by word, by deed. Thank you, God, for giving us chance after chance, Lord. We just we just give you all the glory and honor, God, because we know you are like no other. Lord, in you we have hope. We know, God, that you desire that we would be a pros- we would prosper and be in good health. We know, God, that you desire the best for us, but you know it lies in you. So, Lord, as we walk, we pray, God, that you'll help us, God, to walk in your way. We pray, God, when we stumble, God, that you'll pick us up, Lord. We'll recognize and repent, Lord, and God, that ultimately, Lord, you will cause us to be drawn back to you. We thank you, Father, for the hope that lies in you, and we bless your holy name. Now, Lord, I pray, God, as we go into this lesson, Lord, that you would help me, God, to explain the lesson. Lord, may the message you desire others would receive, may it be delivered and may it be received in that way, Lord. I cannot do it without you. I need you, Lord, and I just give you all the glory and honor, for you alone are worthy. Lord, I pray for this church, Bethel Baptist Church. I pray pray for our pastor, first lady, and the entire Bethel um, ministry and members, Lord. I pray, God, that you would continue to bless us and keep us, God. Help us, Father, to desire you, Lord, and to do your will. Lord, may we be a light to those in the midst of darkness. Now, we bless you and we magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, Today is May 9th. We're focusing on the title, Divine Mercy Gives Us Hope. And the big idea is Isaiah offering hope for the future. We'll start off with our story. And I just want to say I'm very glad to be here. I hope everyone is doing well. I do look forward to the time when we'll all be together again. But in the meantime, we're going to continue to do Sunday School via video. Let's dig into the story now. Did you hear Anton was caught cheating last week? Booker said, can you believe it? I know, right? Jacob said, unreal. Everyone thought he was some golden boy. Good grades, captain of the soccer team, and a leader in his youth group. Who'd have thought? It does seem like he was almost too good to be true, Booker said. Now we know it was. I hate when people are fake. They pretend to be one thing when they're really something else. I hear you, Jacob said. What was Anton's punishment? I think he got some, got detention for two weeks, Booker said. He might have also gotten zeros on the test he tried to cheat on. Wow, Jacob said, I think he got off easy. He's basically been lying to everyone and using other people to make himself look better. It makes you wonder how much he's cheated in the past. Does he even care about putting in the work to get good grades? How can a cheater be a leader in a youth group? Seems like he's been fooling us all. Totally, Jacob said, but maybe he's been going through a rough time. Maybe he just slipped up and we shouldn't hold it over him. Hopefully, he learns from his mistakes and doesn't do it again. I hope so, Booker said. It might take me a while to trust him again. Wow, this is a very interesting story, but it's fairly common. There were a few things I thought we, I think would be helpful to call out here. Isn't it something how our minds can shift about someone when they encounter a difficulty in their life? Now, granted, 
This story, by the way, is a continuation from last week's lesson. So you recognize the name Anton because that was from last week's lesson. But he was caught cheating, if you remember. And our story last week ended with him being punished. And now we hear a little bit more about what happened. But not only about what happened, what others who witnessed it are thinking. And this is, this is like a real situation we see every day when a shepherd of a flock falls, is caught in some sort of situation, or someone who's over, who's well known in the music industry finds himself in a situation being recorded, and people have these all these feelings about them because they have this expectation of people being, I guess, not being human. But I think the other thing, there are different sides of this story. But I think in this particular case, Anton, in all likelihood, wasn't always a cheater. Somewhere along the lines, he, whether because there was so much work and he didn't, he couldn't get it done, or something happened and he started to slip away, slip away. He was over the youth group. He was thought of as a leader and probably a mentor even to some, being the leader of his youth group and doing well in sports, the captain of the soccer team, having good grades. But he fell, he fell into a little bit of a trap. He probably slipped a little bit and then slipped a little bit further and then a little bit further. And all of a sudden, he was more, not all of a sudden, but eventually he just believed the hype in who he was and he began to put it, it was more of a facade because it wasn't who he really was. He, his grades, at least of late, were because he was cheating. If he was cheating while he was a Christian, he'd fallen because cheating is not something we should do as Christians. It's not godly. He was just having a tough time. And think what happened to all those who were watching him. Somebody might have been on the cusp of becoming a Christian. But let's talk about what happened in the story. One of the young men was just thrown off. He, he was just like, you know, not willing to give Anton any mercy and basically focused on all the things he did wrong. The other young man, Jacob, said maybe he's been going through a rough time. He started to think about, hmm, I'm sure this is a tough thing and maybe something else happened that caused all of this and perhaps we should practice some forget, not judging, I think is what he was saying, recognizing that we all find ourselves in situations or we can find ourselves in situations so we want to be careful and it's that kind of mercy when we think about the title of our lesson today that actually gives hope and that's the way that our God treats us we're going to dive into the scripture in a little bit which will give us a sense of a similar scenario occurring with the Israelites. We'll go into the check it questions before we head into the scripture because I won't likely come back to this again. Why was Booker upset with Anton? You know the answer to that question. I think he felt deceived. He felt that Anton was being something that he wasn't. He was putting up a front and others believed him and trusted him and he lied to them. I think it was just like a gut punch. Why didn't Booker consider why did did Booker consider Anton to be fake? Because he was a leader in all these groups. And then they learned as a result of him getting caught cheating that he wasn't really leading, at least at the point that he was shot. Got, he'd gotten caught. And how did Jacob's reaction differ from Booker's? 
Jacob recognized that we all fall short from time to time and there could be some extenuating circumstances that caused Anton to act that way or to something that I guess we all have the potential to find ourselves in. But he just felt like we should practice a little bit of grace, a little bit of forgiveness and try to put ourselves in the other person's, put himself in the other person's shoes. So those are the check it questions. Think about it yourself. Like how would you feel if you found a friend was putting up a facade and then ultimately was not the person you thought they were? How would you feel? Would you still be their friend? Would you still trust them? Those are the types of questions the world has when something happens in the church. Some people automatically want to basically throw out the whole idea of Christianity when one thing happens. But we know we have a God who forgives us. And when we repent and gives, that's what gives us hope for tomorrow. So we're going to go into the lesson, the actual scripture, and see what it has to tell us. First, I'll give a little bit of background and we'll head from there. So for 60 years, Isaiah, which I'm sure you recognize that name, he's a prophet. He was a prophet in Judah. He served as a prophet in Judah. He stood as the voice of God. And we know that's what prophets do amid the people's disobedience. And his message was always to call the people of Israel back to God. At the start of his divine appointment, Judah experienced military and financial strength. They had the backing of God, right? These are God's chosen people. As a result, the elite disregarded God's commands. I imagine with all of that strength, with the backing of God, the all-powerful, and everything looked really good, they began to feel themselves. So as a result, the elite disregarded God's God's commands, especially in the treatment of the poor, widows, and orphans, as well as their own arrogance. Then neighboring Assyria grew in political and military power. Rather than turn to the God of their salvation for refuge, Judah's government leaders looked to the surrounding nations for safety, which was an insult to God. That's something to think about. I'm going to start that. Maybe we'll come back to that in just a moment. Isaiah 29 opens, and that's the scripture we're going to be focused on today. It opens with the prophet making a sorrowful declaration upon Jerusalem using the alias Ariel, which means Lion of God. Isaiah predicted how God would deal with Jerusalem's disobedience. The holy city would be under siege and in mourning because of the coming distress at hand, at the hand of their enemies, as punishment for their idolatry and self-centeredness. Mm, another word, self-centeredness. We might come back to that. But the message also shifts focus, excuse me, the message shifts focus after their punishment. And we're going to read that in the scripture. So that leads us into the lesson. The Lord says, and this is from Isaiah 29, chapter 29, verses 13, 13 to 24, the NIV version. The Lord says, these people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based on merely human rules that have been taught. Therefore, once more, I will astound these people with wonder upon wonder. I will, the wisdom of the wise will perish. The intelligence of the intelligent will vanish. Woe to those who go to great depths to hide their plans from the Lord's, the Lord, who do their work in darkness and think, who sees us, who will know? Mm. This sounds very much like the story when we're talking about Anton. But this is the real situation happening in Judah where the, the people of Israel 
were honoring God with, with their mouth. They were honoring God with the raising of the hands, with the stomping of their feet. They were practicing the rituals, but their hearts weren't in it. And they thought that God wouldn't know that they could hide what they were doing from him as though God is a human. And he is not. Remember, he's omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent. He knows everything. So even their thoughts. And they began to believe the hype when it says, woe to those who go to great debts to hot, excuse me, um, Therefore, once more, I will astound these people wander upon wander. The wisdom of the wise will perish. The intelligence of the intelligent will vanish. So they believe the hype. They believe their own intelligence, their own thought process around these things. And we're practicing just going through the motions, so to speak. And, and just because they were practicing the rituals, they thought that was fine, that it was OK and, and not really helping the poor, the widows and the things the actions that back up the words. The, so, and that's what was happening with Anton too. So we're going to keep on going, but I just want to remind you, that's always, an, we always have this opportunity to fall like this if we don't stay close to God. So we're going to keep on going. Verse 16, you turn things upside down as if the potter were thought to be the clay. Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, you did not make me? Can the pot say to the potter, you know nothing? First section we just read, Israel strayed from the center of God's will. Just because they were in their own thoughts, doing their own thing, believing their own hype, believing that it was all, it, it came from them or their relationships or whatever. And the second part, it's a return to the, God is saying, look, um, you know, uh, you, you can't say that you formed yourself. Do you not realize that I'm your creator, that I'm your God? Do you not realize that? that I made you, you can't tell me how things should happen. I am the one who created you. I'm the one who created all things. In a very short time, verse 17, will not Lebanon be turned into a fertile field and the fertile field seem like a forest? In that day, the deaf will hear the words of the scroll and out of gloom and darkness, the eyes of the blind will see. Once more, the humble will rejoice in the Lord the needy will rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. The ruthless will vanish. The mockers will disappear. And all who have an eye for evil will be cut down. So after Israel has gone through some things, God's going to allow those things to happen, which he allows things to happen to all of us. Sometimes it's a, it's a testing, sometimes it's a proving ground. Sometimes it's just a, it's a consequence of disobedience for us to return to the center of his will, to return back. And that's exactly what's happening here. So that there's the desire to return back, to the desire to recognize the potter and the need for his grace and his mercy. And that's what's happening here. So that soon the deaf is going to hear. You're, you're deaf right now because you, feel, you don't need me because you can kind of do what you want to do. That's what it, you, 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 you're not even looking for me right now. You're blind right now because right now everything seems good. But when things go bad, guess what? You'll start looking for me and then you'll find me. I'm going to hear you and then things will shift. And that's where we're headed into in verse 21. Those who... With a word, make someone out to be guilty who ensnared the defender in court and with false testimony, deprive the innocent of justice. So, you know, bad things are happening when you make someone out to be guilty. You start doing um, some of the wrong things. Those who even the Lord will allow to 
and he allowed to take Israel, like the Assyrians, were, they, they were victorious over Judah. They were victorious. And th that made them feel really good. But God also, when we turn back to him, he brings, he, he brings us out of our situation. And that's what he's saying. Like, yeah, they, I know they seem like they've got it under control. I know it seems like everything is bad and, and that you don't have me as your source. But I'm going to turn this situation around. They're not going to win because you're mine. Therefore, this is what the Lord says in verse 22. This is what the Lord who redeemed Abraham says to the descendants of Jacob. No longer will Jacob be ashamed. No longer will their faces grow pale. When they see among them their children, the work of my hands, they will keep my name holy. They will acknowledge the holiness of the Holy One of Jacob and will stand in awe of the God of Israel. So he's like, I'm going to bring you back to me. Yes, when you um, return to the center, I'm going to keep my promise. Those who are wayward in spirit will gain understanding. Those who complain will accept my, my, excuse me, will accept instruction because your heart has shifted back to the one who created you to doing what I've asked you to do, my command to being obedient. And that is what I expect what happened with Anton while he took a left turn got off track, probably further off track than he ever thought he would be, didn't even realize it because he started feeling himself. This situation has brought him into a, a tough road. Now he's about to endure some punishment. And sure, some people along the way will want to criticize Christianity, will not want to give him another chance. But we know we have a God who is a God of second chances. And so as Christians ourselves, when we make a left turn, God's going to bring us back to the center of his will. But then that's the hope we have in him because we recognize that he is God because of our faith, because of the promises that he gives us, we can return and he will return to us and forgive us of all our sins and unrighteousness. So let's go into the scripture discussion. In today's scripture passage, we learned about God's judgment and mercy. Isaiah was a powerful prophet of the Lord who foretold God's faithful deliverance. Isaiah chapter 29 includes God telling the Israelites that they can't hide their evil. The Lord clearly knows the, their plans of wickedness. Unfortunately, the people pretended to worship God and practice their religious traditions with pure hearts, but their motives were false. They were simply doing it. They really weren't planning to, they really were not connected to heart to God. Their hearts were not connected to God. They weren't trying to be obedient. The hypocrisy of the people will vanish because their nation will be destroyed. God will allow those who can't hear to hear God's words and the blind to see and the humble to rejoice in the Lord. God declares that there will be a new order in the world. Injustice, pain, and violence won't exist. God's joy, peace, and justice will reign in the world. And that's the good news. While we can look out at our nation today and see where even in the past year, to see where things were not going, have not been going. Even now, we can see injustice happening all the time. And folks don't want to help the poor. We, we, we see all kinds of evil. We know as Christians that God has made a promise that he is going to return a new world order, that there will be justice and we will be able to be in peace and without pain and with him. And I look forward to that day because sometimes it can be a bit much, but we know that that's when I begin to pray and I look for God's peace so that I don't allow the things happening in the world to take me into turmoil. And that's also a benefit of Christianity see, and, and being in relationship with the Lord because we can see things and I know they look bad when we see all the injustice, the killings and what have you that should not be happening where our black men are being shot down 
and someone else kills any number of people and somehow they're taken into custody and given meals and things of that nature and they aren't hurt at all. It, it really is sad. But we know that God is in control and we know ultimately that he's going to turn this situation around. So what we want to do is make sure we're staying rooted in God's word because when we have good roots, when we are rooted in his word, he will guide us. He, he will ultimately restore us to him. Um, we can, even when we fall, he can bring us back to where we need to be after we repent. And we have to be careful that we don't just go through the motions. I was reminded of that just recently in my own Bible study. And I have been putting forth effort to intentionally connect with God. And I'm suggesting that to you as well. When you sit down to pray, don't just do it to check it off the list. Don't just go through the motions. Believe when you're praying, when you're talking to God, believe and know that he hears you and connect with him. Tell him your thoughts and your feelings and ask him and believe that he's hearing you and that he will change whatever it is when it's according to his will. Just believe it and continue to seek him. And I promise you, you'll have that kind of relationship where it won't just be a facade. It won't just be going through the motions. It, it is. He is real. God is real. He's real. He's real. He's real. So in today's lesson, you learned about God's just judgment and mercy. I want you to think about how you can apply what you learned in your, to your own life and develop a plan to implement what you've learned. We want, even if we make a wrong turn, we want to gain understanding and we want to accept his instruction because we know that he is the great shepherd and he'll guide us into all truth. We don't want to begin to rely on our own minds or some, we don't want to believe lies. We won't, don't want to be blinded to the truth. No, we want to hear the truth because the Lord says it. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. I just want to be able to hear and I want you to be able to hear. And know that we have hope in God. It's available to us. And I thank God for that each and every day. When I wake up in the morning, I spend, I spend time with the Lord. I am just thankful that I've been exposed to him. That I am not just going through the motions. I wrote down a few things that I want to tell you before we wrap up. We all make mistakes, but as Christians, all hope is not lost. We know that all of us sin, but because of God's great, great mercies, because, because of the Lord's great mercies, we are not consumed. His mercies fail not. They are new each and every day. So what I want to suggest to you as I come to a close is don't give up looking for God. Don't give up desiring God. Talk to him about everything. Don't settle for a fake experience. We know fake is not, it is not nearly as good as the real thing. Seek him while he may be found. Seek him. His word says, um, seek me and you will find me when you seek me with your whole heart. Desire it more than anything. I desire it more than anything. Um, and uh, then just think about it, right? You know, you want those roots to, to be established. So think about right now, what are you rooted in? What are you rooted in? What do you desire most? And where do you spend your time? And make sure, right, that you root yourself in God's word. And like a plant, you will grow if your roots are healthy. So that wraps up our lesson. Divine mercy gives us hope. We, we hope thou God, for I shall praise him who is the health of my countenance. He will give you, put a smile on your face. He will make you experience joy even when things are not the best but we can find hope in him so i pray you've been blessed i hope that you will wear your mask 
and that you'll keep your social distance. We're coming out of this thing. We're coming out of this thing. Uh, life is going to return back to some semblance of what it was. But um, we've had the opportunity to be uh, in the presence of God without all the other stuff. So I, I hope that you've taken that time to draw nigh to him and to establish your relationship with the Lord. So we'll talk later. Have a blessed week.